Okay, so sorry for that, everyone. We are back. Thank you for holding tight. I know there were some technical difficulties, but it wouldn't be a stream without them. So, as you can see, we are joined by two more members. It's not just the Average Jays, but it's the Average Jays plus guests. So, up front, we have Brian D. Covington, friend of the show. He's been by before. You know him, you love him. But newcomer to the show, we do have our dear friend, Chella here uh, coming at you today. So if you guys want to go ahead, introduce what you do, who you are, and then we'll get it rolling. Brian, go ahead. Me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm actually, okay, okay. So I am Brian D. Covington, author of Between Magic and and between Magic and Dreams Reclamation, as well as the three issue I make between Magic and Dreams, Meanwhile, which is an in-betweener for the second and third novel, which I'm currently writing now. Um, I would like to say that I'm further along than I am, but <laughs> my writing style is as that of um, basically the story is finished when the story is finished. I can only promise it'll be out this year. Like R.R. R. Martin. that. <laughs> it, it's yeah, the yeah. railroad martin approach but, um, we understand i just figured you know let the story finish on its own if i rush it then there's going to be things left unsaid that i'm going to wish i had said so yeah. okay oh, is, is there more <laughs> is there <laughs> I mean, anything more you want to know <laughs> we can we can rock that into the episode i think i think that's a great yes, intro yeah. so <laughs> go ahead cella <laughs> let them know what you're all about okay so um my name is cella my twitch handle is created by cella i am a twitch streamer so i am essentially a variety streamer i mainly do nintendo games so my um current games are animal crossing pokemon a little bit of overwatch some TV games and what i'm also known for is my art hence the created by cella so essentially what i do is i do um acrylic glass paintings of right now anime characters that's kind of been the big demand and i also do cell phone cases as well hoping to expand mm -hmm. on that and we can talk about that later into more different types of merch that can be accessible and varied through my different audiences cool and uh jay what are you here for like why like why are you here? um i'm the other half of the jay so mm. um no nah, i'm just playing um <laughs> That's, I mean, uh, I feel so like I've never am, seen you, so pff, that's weird. Uh, so I am a writer, so I've always wanted to create stories. Um, just like Brian, I write things and I let them speak for me. Um, and most of the, my scripts are done, but there are other things that are like, in the works, but I have to just keep writing it and make sure it's done and make sure it's finessed before I give it out to the world. Uh, my focus now is comic books because that seems to be the way to go for most people to consume my thoughts. Does that make sense? I mean, I feel like you're being a little humble here. What you you have a comic book that's out? You have multiple comic books that's out. Like, I feel like you should you should let the well, people yes, know. My, all right, yeah, my. Whole yeah, most of my comic books, I wish I had it near me, but so my first one, my brother Teddy, uh, yeah. my second, uh, what was it? No, Damn, I just put them from, away too. What? I'm upset. They're Did usually right? literally right on my desk. Yeah, they're always right by you. Um, mine is always in my bag. I just don't know where my bag is. But uh, my brother Teddy being my first book, uh, The Alien Heroes being uh, the second of issue zero and one. And then uh, Napoleon from the Machine issue one, and then two, ideally, is making its way to my house physically. And yeah, that's it. And I'm just trying to get it into publishing houses. That's the goal. Don't you have some screenwriting chops too? Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> just, see, the, yeah. the problem, the problem with Jay, Arsenal. yeah, the, the problem with Jay is that he is too humble for his own good. He forgets all the cool stuff that he puts out there, all the pretty cool shit that people like. So you have to you have to put so, it all yeah, out there. <laughs> I did I did write a script for a short. Uh, me and my boy Carlos, uh, he directed and uh, 
cinematographer. He shot it with his camera. So he was a director and a cinematographer. I wrote the script to a story called uh, The Cycle. Uh, we submitted it to our first film festival, uh, the Dominican uh, Film Festival in New York. And there were other uh, festivals. I'm just don't recall them because they were recent, but there were, that means there's three other laurels we got for our short. Um, we were in the semifinalists for one of them. I just, for, again, I forget, but I haven't been following that stuff because he's the one who follows it. But yes, I do get a writing credit. I am on IMDb somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> That's a goal in and of itself is to be on IMDb. That's pretty cool. Yeah, um, And for me, I... Mm -hmm. I'm friends with all these people, so I get to pull them all on our show. That's that's my that's what I bring to the to the world here. Um, I mean, no, but you as, bring other things. As of late, I have been known to you know write. I've written some short stories. Um, I would like to say that I've helped Jay with a couple of his things. Um, I'm I mean, my main bread and butter is probably art. I do a lot of studio and digital art. I guess more digital art now. Um, kind of made my way to like the iPads of the world. And doing stuff like that i have an art account um i haven't really done too much with it of yet i'm still working on like staying consistent and all that but that is those are my major outlets and of course i produce the show in collaboration with jay we produce the average days podcast and hopefully continue to expand a little bit more in the near future there's a little little tidbit but um but yeah that's that's what we all bring right now. But for this After Dark, like I said, it's a little different than what we typically do. Um, we're not going to take an issue and we'll solve it. Save. Yeah, we're not saving the world today, but we are bringing some new creativity to the world. So we're going to go ahead and just break down the different things that we do, why we do them, and what we hope to get out of it. It's going to be a nice, cool conversation with some cool people. So... I guess you know what we went Brian first before. Now we're gonna go Chella. Chella, what got you started in like the streaming space? Um, so technically, you know, COVID happened, right? So being home, it there was nothing to do. There were some people that I knew that were like, "Hey, I'm streaming." I'm like, "What the heck is this?" I've seen like me streams and stuff like that. So there was people. There was one YouTuber that I was obsessed with that he started streaming. So I'm like, "Hey, cool. This is you know something to watch." Then kind of just went down the rabbit hole, made some friends along the way, like just was just really consuming it. And the thought of it in like the first year never occurred to me to stream myself. And some people were just like, hey, you would be great on stream. You would be doing this and doing that. I'm like, I don't like at this point, I wasn't playing shooter games. Like, I don't have like I don't have a PC. I don't do COD. I don't do Apex. Like the thought of guns like gave me anxiety. Like <laughs> what am I going to play Animal Crossing as I'm watching Animal Crossing streamers? like yeah you can do whatever so one day i was just like okay you know screw it let's do it like just for fun like you know the worst thing that could happen is the tanks and then i'm like i'm never streaming it so i did it for fun just to see what would happen like you know if i enjoy it great if i you know if it's great cool so after a while i had a lot of friends you know just support me and got me to the affiliate and then just expanded from there i started doing just animal crossing and pokemon because that's all i had Mind you, I still just do a switch. I don't have this big fancy PC. Up. I started with literally um, my bed, this little table, my laptop, and that was it. Like capture card switch, that's all I had. No one would ever know. So I did that for a while. Then as affiliate hit um, and donos and like um, subs hit, I was able to purchase a camera. I was also to purchase like, lights and stuff. And it grew from there. So it grew from the switch games to then streaming art which also skyrocketed my business a lot more because streamers were like hey i want art for my stream room so then when i would do it they're like hey i want one too so it kind of just skyrocket like you know it builds off of that so a lot of my streamer friends i do have to thank for that for one getting my foot in the door just streaming in general and also getting my art in the door um the art itself has grown that's another conversation we can talk about later but um, streaming itself has been a lot of fun. Um, I did not expect for me. I just recently did two years. Uh, and Justin has one of my I do have artworks. one of your pieces. And that's pieces. like beginning artwork. That was like first year. We're I can show you the most recent one I did. I went from to acrylic, so now we're kind of going. That's into dope. This. Thank you. Oh, I watched that stream when you were do when you were touching that up. No, it's great. 
Yeah, and then like I do phone cases as well. So I I stream that um just to have people talking, also just to have, you know, different things to sort out. And now that I moved, I was able to upgrade my set a little bit. Still, you know, a laptop and a switch until things move over, but um I can really say that because of COVID, I, like you know, ironically there was good that came from COVID that I have this platform. I was able to meet such amazing people. Go on, go to London because of streaming. I remember I'm that. Going to Vegas oh, that's now, right. that's um, in the summer because of streaming, and hopefully TwitchCon in San Diego very soon. So mm-hmm. I am very grateful for this opportunity and this this happenstance of like, you know, what's the worst that can happen? And now it's like, hey, here we are. Well, yeah, man, that's how this stuff kind of happens, right? You you kind of take the dive. It was similar to me and Jay when we started the podcast because. We started it over COVID too, and we had talked about it for years. We talked about it since college, and then since college, yeah, yeah, because we did the radio show together. We wanted to do something else. We wanted to continue that, and you know, it only took us what six years after college to actually sit down and record our voices. And yeah, yeah you know, you start you start with what you got, and I mean, you. I've been following your stuff since you know since you kind of started. I want to say. So, you know, like, Literally I was when there. that page followed me, I was, who's this? And I was, I, like, was oh, I was there before it was cool, just FYI. But, you know, um, <laughs> it, it's, it's been really cool to see you, like, grow in your position. And, like, more, like, lately, since we moved over to streaming, right? Because we, we were recording the show, um, you know, still on a weekly basis and all that. We were recording it for about a year and a half, right? Just about, like, a little over a year. Um, but now then we started mm. streaming the episodes live, like, and we're actually, I was just looking at some of the analytics the other day. We're going to hit two years in two months or three months, two years of streaming, which is pretty nuts. So it's fun to see this stuff kind of like snowball and, and, and pick up pace. And one thing is like, like it, it was really cool watching you kind of progress and like your art has, I mean, I loved your art from the beginning. That's why I got a piece. Right. But um, seeing it like getting better and better and watching you like doing it in real time is, is really fun. I put you on in the background a lot and like, just like your banter. And I just like, will have you on while I'm doing something else. And like, I can still like, I watch you and I can, this is what you're doing. I've caught a couple of the Pokemon streams, but, um, but yeah, no, I, I absolutely love your stream. It's, it's so much fun. Thank you. So, okay. So now Brian, Oh, Jay, what did you guys say? I was just saying my question because you also stream on TikTok as well, or is it because I've seen your some of your TikTok stuff? So right now I don't stream on TikTok, but what happens is because Twitch is just so um stagnant, so it's like it's either mm-hmm. a stream and that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, what I do is I repurpose a lot of my clips from Twitch and move it to TikTok to Got further it. engagement. I haven't hit one K to do like the dual streaming yet. Yeah, that is a goal hopefully, but. Um, to try to grab an audience from there to pull them into Twitch has kind of been a strategy um, that I've heard from a lot of people just to kind of like um, engage with them, bring them over there to watch it, and then vice versa just to like um, move them around socials just to get um, as much engagement as possible. With yeah. No, that's like a huge part of the whole game, right? Like it's keeping up with social. And that's yeah. so – like for us, I know we suck at it. Like we, we do we do okay, but like – but we, we doing great. <laughs> but like we, I think you're doing great. we, I feel like we, we don't post enough or like maybe we don't post like at the right times. I'm also super critical of us and the show and like, you know, that's a, that's a thing, but I know TikTok, we had one really good video that went up and it's me. Oh, that was the one where losing my mind. We were like, that was the one where, so that just a small like tangent. Me and Justin were just recording our like promo for After Dark. And I forget how it goes, but we were just like, hey, our name, like, we're like, this is the average A's. My name is Justin. My name is Jay. And then we just, there was like a slight lull. And he was like, well, go fuck yourself. And we just start (laughs) laughing and we posted it. And that one just got so many views. That one like lit up the board for some reason, you know, but it it was. And that didn't even have our video. That was just like our logo with our audio but um but yeah we definitely have to get back on i mean i know we have a presence on tiktok and stuff but i know that's where all the youngins are so we gotta get i know we gotta get that the sounds the audios the filters like you have to like balance of like 
don't do everything too trendy, but be original, but original niche. So I know for me, my my big things are always like the shiny videos. Like whenever I catch mm. a shiny, it hits big. When I talk Pokemon, it hits big. If I do like Overwatch has kind of been a bit better because more people play it. Yeah. But I'm also like, I am not I'm not the best at it. So you're going to have to forgive me. But people like seeing you mess up. So it's like that's you yeah. kind of have to like yeah, look at yourself. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, it's like it's like what gets you talking, right? It's like the the quote unquote like the water cooler moments, right? Because it's something yeah. you're not expecting it. So like, you, know, you should follow that's this girl. Point. She sucks. <laughs> But I'll make you laugh. That's my thing. I might suck at gameplay, and I usually do. And I tell my chat, I'm like, you're not here for good gameplay. You're here for laughter. I can make a good joke. So that's good. So that's they, definitely they come true. with a disclaimer. It's like, it's not going to be fun, but you're going to laugh at it. <laughs> that's definitely true. I've definitely Definitely's laughed many Disney, times. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of jacked up days could be fixed by a good Twitch. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So Brian, go ahead. Let us know. I mean, I feel like maybe we touched on this like what? Let me get my charger real quick. Two years ago, maybe when we first had you on, but um, heads. yeah, on the talking head segment. Let's remind the people. But uh, but yeah, just dive back in for all the new the new listeners, the new viewers. Um, let us know how you got into, you know, writing and where you're at now. Right, so I guess um, as far as writing is concerned, I've been doing that pretty much since junior high. Mm -hmm. um, initially, uh, I didn't really think too much of it because I figured, you know, everybody can make up stories, so you know, it wasn't a big thing. But it was actually my music teacher that uh, that brought it to my attention, and then from there, I just kind of started experimenting with and so forth, short story, but, um, writing. Uh, an actual novel that didn't come until um i had been published before but it's just been for poetry and some artwork but um yeah when i had a lightning in a bottle moment in 19 i got my first novel um there <laughs> it just kind of skyrocketed in a bunch of different directions because although i wanted to tell this story I was interested in using all these different mediums that were at my disposal. I mean, like video, there's audio, there's comics, there's art, there's all ways. So it's kind of spiraled off into that other stuff. Um, I guess as far as my reasoning to do it, initially it was because my mom is this avid reader, and I really wanted to get into her library because I had the house <laughs> put the library in there. Um, I just wanted to be amongst the legends like Stephen King and Asimov and Frost and all these guys. Um, you know, it just seemed far fetched earlier in so many obstacles. Um, oh, well, yeah, this is the year of the internet, um, accessibility to information, pretty much everywhere. And it's also the uh, the season of the app, so there's always an app for everything. You want to animate, there's an app for that. Right, there's an app for that. But this made it to where it wasn't such a pie in the sky thing. So I started with one, second one, comic came. Um, I have lots of other plans. Um, Dharma is actually involved with one of them. But we'll just touch on that. <laughs> I'm really excited to just kind of, you know, get that done. But when I do the comic, um, we call it the trade. That yes. way I have everything in there, and that's going to be one. Um, speaking of which, I got character illustrations to show you. Oh, I am. Yeah, I think you'll like that. I've been waiting. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> very patiently, too, and I appreciate it. It's been like, but, in a while. Yeah, no, yeah, that's, I've, and I feel like a, so much to try to get done at yeah. once. And I try to tell people like, I am but one man, but mm -hmm. the momentum, man, that up. And as I'm an avid gamer, so I've got just got my PS5. It's sitting there, calling me. I just oh, know that if I start same playing, thing. same <laughs> thing. We're in the yeah, same man. boat. 
Because if I start playing, I know writing is going to fall behind. I know myself. So I leave it there in the box, and it's like my prize when I get Oh, it's it's in the box. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. got a space for it and everything. Okay, because if it's if it's out of the box, it's calling you. Like, you're just like sleepwalking. <laughs> you wake up. Well, you don't wake up. You're sleepwalking. Open the box. Like, how'd that get there? Every night you go to bed, it just gets further and further to the space. Wake up tired, but I'm levels in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did that happen? Okay. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot that um I want to do in the future. I, I just feel like... I have to keep myself at a certain pace, otherwise I get ahead of myself and then overwhelming and yada yada. So yeah. Lately, I've just been ch- catching up on the um, admin part of things, which is <laughs> not fun part of being a creative. <laughs> but yeah. um, yeah, I-, I know it's necessary, so I'm trying to knock it out so it doesn't come back and get me later. Yeah, I mean, as far as um, future plans. It's hard for me to speak on that because I feel like if I say it, there's suddenly people waiting for it, and I'm just like, well, I, <laughs> well, I this is this a first. safe space. <laughs> this is a safe space. You can't say it. All you're doing is speaking it into existence. You're holding yourself accountable. That's exactly. a great way to hear it. No. Yep, holding yourself accountable. <laughs> it's like a dog, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'll say this. Um, so. Screenplay written for book one. Shop around to certain people that have spoken to. Me. But um, I just have in my mind that I have to do and do that <laughs> because if I try to do both at the same time, it's ADHD brain. I do have, but. It's up, it went undiagnosed for most of my life, but wasn't until recently, maybe a, four years ago, that I got tested and it seemed like they were talking directly to me. <laughs> All the uh, something was just kind of <laughs> fell into place. And I was like, that's weird. Okay. I mean, I never let it stop me. It's found workarounds. Make yeah. sure I got what I wanted to get done, done. So, um, but yeah, screenplay. I have someone I've been speaking to about animation. I figure if I can get a solid trailer done, as long as the quality stays up across the board, and I can get my vision put there, see it move, just entice the right people. I'm moving. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I just want to see it move, you know? Yeah. Now I see it in here, <laughs> but I want to see it everywhere else. Yeah, I, I agree um, with that. I agree with that. I'm in, I feel like I'm wearing the similar position because, like, I mm-hmm. first going back to what you said before about, like, when when I graduated and then, like, a year I was working as a doorman for a year. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a writer. I'm going to do this. And I've told people that I'm going to do this thing. I would write in my notebook every mm-hmm. day of, like, ideas or storylines. But then, you know, you feel like because oh man, you, you think about the big two, Marvel and DC, like I'm never going to get in there. Only way to get in there is if you've written journal or like journalistic stuff. Or again, I was telling Justin this, like unless you've been on the CIA or FBI or you're a lawyer, mm-hmm. most of those people <laughs> are like lawyers or they have like their like tenure teachers in like uh, colleges. So it's like I then I feel defeated. But then, you know. Uh, you know, what Chella said, like, kind of COVID was that double-edged sword where it's like, it's about that time. I think because, and not to get all political, but because we live in a country where we're always working, we never get the moment to just stop and daydream. And that's like my dream, to like live a life to daydream. I don't want to be a billionaire, which would be dope, but I want to live a comfortable life to just be daydreaming. And because of COVID, it gave us that nice respite to be like, oh, I can do this thing. For me, it was not that I could do it. It's like, okay, I have this breathing room. Let's start that process and finish it through. And for me, that was for my brother, mm-hmm. Teddy. And that kind of just steamrolled into like other, or rather not steamrolled, snowballed into other things. So I do, I do feel you when, when it comes to like the progression of stuff and then the momentum. Like it's like when you, you feel like if you stop, 
it's like no one's gonna see what's in here yeah i think it's something to be led where people don't realize how much comes into creativity where it's like you can't just write yeah and like there's so much that goes into it because i try to i try to do writing and we'll talk about another time and even (laughs) like with anything with streaming with drawing with anything there's so much here Mm -hmm. and it takes so much for this to work for the hands to work for the apps to work and i want to say that i feel like COVID also led to this shift of um relatability so Mm -hmm. when it comes Mm -hmm. to like streamers and like influencers we're not looking at like the biggest of the bigs and the best of the best like those tier ones we're looking for that person that's like hey you know what come with me on this journey and see like the progression because i know i'm on tiktok when i see someone doing something i'm like yes you got it you made it (laughs) and i feel like we're all here trying to not only just be successful, but also be relatable and an inspiration. So I was like, hey, you know what? If I could do it with all the things I have going on, you can do it too. Mm-hmm. Because people, you know, in Marvel and DC, like they're getting paid to do this. This is like their livelihood. This yeah. is something we're doing like out of passion of like, this is like oh. our inner child. This is our, you know, this is our thought child from like since we were six, since we were 10. This has been our childhood dream. Then mm-hmm. now as an adult, we kind of get to be like, hey, I remember that dream when I wanted to be an artist and when I wanted to get into voice acting. Because when I was a child, I really wanted to get into voice acting. I'm trying to get mm-hmm. back into that now and kind of just like revisiting that as an adult of like, okay, how does it look like now? And of course, imposter syndrome is the biggest, like, oh. the biggest lie. But I think the fact that we're here saying like, hey, you, you know, we're trying, we're doing something. There is product. is something to be acknowledged. It's something to be proud of. And I know that with the rise of technology, people take note, take heed, and definitely want to be part of the journey to not only support yeah. us, support any artist, but also have that part of like, hey, if they did it, then maybe I can, you know, pick up that bug or pick up that paper or that pen again. So yeah. I feel like we're we're in that age where we can where we want to be more relatable with the people that we see on the screen. Oh, a hundred percent. And I I agree with that too because it's like what you said, uh, being relatable. Again, my story got me to connect with Brian. Like I would never have met him, never knew who he was if I didn't start my my you know trajectory. And now we're we're linked. Like there, there I I feel like our stories would have somehow found each other. And and it did. And I've read both his books, and I'm and I'm just like helping him out create something. So that's dope. Yeah, it's it's funny to see how when you take that first that initial like hard step, like we were talking about momentum a little while ago, it's funny to see how once you take that hard step and you just say, you know, screw it, I'm going to start with whatever I have available. If you keep that up, it eventually like it has to evolve, right? You get more out of it as you continue to do it and what you get out of it is just sharing creativity with the rest of the world. I know um, wanting people to see your stuff is a huge point and like inspiration. I know everyone kind of like touched on that a little bit, right? You want to inspire others. You want others to kind of like pick up the pen, right? That's the big, I think that's a creative's biggest dream, right? To have, to inspire another person to go down their path. One of the biggest things that I try and like preach to everyone that I come in contact with is you know if you love it share it right if you share this with everyone else like it only makes the world a better place right when we go you know me and jay have been blessed enough to to do some conventions this year behind the table right so that's been a massive thing for not like not only the show but jay's comics right like getting him out there and showing people because in my truly in my eyes and i've said it to millions of people at this point i think jay is the next stan lee and he just needs that platform but they're getting there and showing people and like just just sharing yourself i think and i think uh cello you said it before like your inner child right sharing your inner child with other people right those inner child those inner children end up holding hands it's such a fun thing to do to connect with people um, when we've done the conventions, I've had so much fun talking with people. I have, you know, people have come to us and be like, oh, like, 
we know you like we remember you from this thing or we listen to your show and just knowing that you have that impact you know whether it's from a book whether it's from a show you know whether it's from streaming like that impact on others it really drives us to keep going because it's validation and we were like oh snap like what we're doing is even if it's one person right that what we're doing made an impact on this world so that's that's the funnest part Right. You were saying, Brian, before. I'll just say one of the things that I think most is when I go to and someone is. Oh, hey, Brian, hold hold on. I think you're you're coming in a little. Do that. You're coming in a little choppy. Give it a second. Okay. Cool. Oh, you're you're starting to freeze up. Okay, oh. try one more time. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, I think your network is I think I think your signal's a little low, dude. We can't hear you. Unless it's just me. Can anyone else hear him? Okay. It's no, a no, little it's, choppy on my yeah. end too. Okay. I thought it was clear enough. Okay, try now. I was saying I can leave and come back. Oh yeah, yeah. Try try dropping right? off and coming back because it seems like it's getting better, but just try it real quick. All right, guys, just hold tight. Yeah, I could edit this on uh, Twitch. Yeah. Okay, just give us a couple seconds. Brian will be right back. In the meantime, how's life, everyone? A little everyone? choppy as well. Speak of, speak again. Please don't tell me I'm being I'm choppy. Yeah. I I am like it's choppy on yeah. my end. Yeah, it was fine before. It was choppy in the beginning. It got better, and then it got you're choppy now. Yay. How do we sound to you? To me, you guys sound fine. It's like we're one second delay with you. So, yeah. Here for the J says we're all fine. It's just for us, it sounds weird. I think it's Squadcast. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about yeah. moving on to yeah. a different... Our platform has had a couple of issues, so uh, we might have to make some changes. But, yeah, I think that's what it is. Like For the stream, it looks like Cause all my levels are fine on my end. That's what's weird. But when yeah. it's coming into like actually talking and stuff, it looks like there's stuff being missed, but clearly on the stream, it's not, but just give us a second. Thank you here for the J's for letting us know we're all good. Um, but we will return to our regularly scheduled programming in a minute or two. In the meantime, How's life, everyone? Is everyone doing okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could make this full time. Let's just leave it at that. Well, yeah. I could stream and do all this full time. Oh yeah. So oh, that's that's the goal, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not crushing under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> like everything's fine. Yeah, quit the day job the, and do the this. Dog in, in the fire. Yeah, it's a little fire. Everything's fine. This is. Yeah, that's that's the goal, right? I mean, uh, it, it, if we could all just create all the time and make a living, then that's that's what needs to happen, right? No, nah, yeah, I, don't I, be I, so simple. Yeah, yeah, like for me, like one of my goals is ideally to go part time at at work, because at least like part timers, as of now, like at my job, is just we have we still get the benefits, we still get the vacation time. It will accrue slower, but I'm like. Mm -hmm. If I can do what I'm doing now that supplements my job's monies, that would be ideal. Dude, I would do I would do this and conventions. Oh, oh he came in for a second. He came for a second. Okay. If we could do this and conventions, like just that was that was what we did, I would be I would mm -hmm. immediately uproot my life. Like 
If I if I knew I have enough money to be stable, just get on, that's what I would do. We just get an RV and live on the road. I love that, dude. I've I have literally had this exact conversation with my wife, where I've been like, let's sell the house, get a tricked out RV, travel the country for like three years, and then come back I to something like better. Your RV, your RV would be would say Big Daddy on it because of your switch. Account. Oh, for sure. It would have it would have Big Daddy on the side, hundred <laughs> percent. But yeah, no, it's They're like yeah, that's that's my ride over there, Big Daddy. <laughs> and it's just me, like like the most obnoxious horn too. Like yeah, Big Daddy's here. <laughs> I oh, mean, yeah, I, that's how you know he rolled in. I've always been a really big fan of the cucaracha horn, you know, that one. Of course, it, it would be that one. Yeah, of course. Okay, so here I for the J said, if I could play, see. oh, what'd you say? Wait, sorry, you oh yeah, she would. On. She would play Disney Dreamlight Valley, Animal Crossing, and Hogwarts Legacy on the RV. We have a Absolutely. deal. Absolutely. <laughs> I love L that idea. Listen, you could you could have your own cozy gamer stream. Like you set it up, and you just be cozy gaming, babe, and then. We would just be content creators. So it would be like, Erica would be like, it would just be called Cozy Gamer. Yeah, why not? I think I actually, I think I follow an account on Instagram and she's called Cozy Gamer. So she has to figure out something else. But, but yeah, why not? Cozy games and just. Cozy games are underrated. You just, that's like, finds a balance between like cozy games and like high, like high energy games. It's a difference. Like you can see the different crowd that comes in. I'm just on Animal Crossing, like, you know, building an island. They're like, hey, do you have any materials? Like, you know, it's very, it's a different vibe. If I oh. play, like, Overwatch or Pokemon, they're like, come fight me. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, this is a Wendy's. Please relax. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't realize how much went into streaming until I started it, like, learning all, like, the OBS, the laws, the audio, the tech. And then I'm like, how do people get paid for this? And I'm like, the sponsorships are crazy. Oh, like, yeah. How does everyone get sponsored by like X amount of I'm like, oh. So there is a lot that goes into it that I didn't realize until I got into it. Oh, it's not just put on the screen and have fun and people just find you. Like, you to, there is a lot of extra work. Yeah, it's like yeah. a. And if you have a full time job, it cuts into that pretty deep, right? Like, I mean. As we went along, we now have we have somebody that edits our audio for like the podcast part. But when we first started, I like had to teach myself audio and video editing. So like I was doing everything. We were only doing I think we were doing episodes once a month when we first started because we needed all that time. And then to learn like like when to post on socials and stuff like that. And then when we finally got to streaming, learning like OBS and Streamlabs and all that stuff, whatever, like fits best for you and then making it look nice and like yeah then the monetization thing i've actually been looking into it more so now and learning about like all the different like mi like little sponsorships and stuff that you can get and it's just it's so much and you're right like people do not understand how much work it that like goes into it and how much thought you have to put in and it's putting on really a performance. I feel like every time I stream, like it has to be like this performance where if people come in and I'm just like sitting and just playing and not talking, then it's like, why are they going to stay? So it's kind of like a YouTube video slash like live chat type of thing. Yeah. I kind of have to like narrate what I'm doing, talking to chat. How do I keep them engaged with like polls or like predictions and like commands? Or, like there's mm -hmm. a lot to like keep people entertain and some people are lurkers which i'm like i'm okay with lurkers <laughs> but i'm also like okay how do i get to engage even if it's not like with a full-on conversation yeah so it does depend a lot like on the stream itself what am i playing um how i interact with them because i've played a lot of different games and or i've done a lot of different activities to try to see like where hey, brain. Hey, brain. hey so can you hear me okay yes, cool yes. we're all good now okay cool all good now all right, okay. there's, there's an echo here. yeah hold on hold on let me let me that could that could be... no that's coming through brian no, that's... all 
You, you good? Yes, Ben. Okay. All right, we're we're steadily getting back there, guys. Thank you for all your patience. And you know what? We've been we've been entertaining. I think we've been talking some fun stuff and cool stories. So you know what? You're you're welcome for our entertainment. You know how about that? I'm not gonna thank you for patience anymore. You're welcome for entertainment. You're welcome. You're, it's like you're welcome, guys. Look, I'm showing skin. Ooh, ooh. Whoa. Oh, oh no. there he goes. Well, oh. Am I messing up, guys? Okay, there we no, go. No, you're good. You're, you're like you look good. You look good. No echo. Nice, video looks good. Sounds coming in. Woof. So, what were you saying before? Do you remember? <laughs> Uh, I believe I was saying, um, yeah, I was talking about how when people would approach me at conventions and were not saying that, um, they wanted to do what I was doing and they wanted to get into telling their stories and everything. And I try to give them advice that I know, right. Versus kind of speculating on what could possibly help. So what I typically say is like, look, I mean, the first thing first is you got to get the story out of your head. So I'm like, we can't fall in love with it unless you get it out of your head so we can actually consume it somehow. But yeah. um, now I would like to say that what they aren't, what they're giving me aren't excuses, but reasons as to why they can't move on it as quickly as they would like. And I was there too, so I, I, I get it. So I do what I can to like lead them to things that would kind of help hold them accountable. Like, um, uh, Clubhouse is what I would normally do because there's like writers groups in there that you know they were right for X amount of time. Then you come on and say, Okay, this is what I've gotten done, this is what I want to do the next sprint, you know. And if you do something like that every day, even if it's just for an hour, you start getting chapters behind you. So I'm like, Look, this is this is what I did when I started to slow down when COVID hit. So this is a good way to just help you get the story out of your head. And then from there, there's people out here that want us to succeed. So look up with those people, have them mentor you on the ways of how to get the book out. And once that's done, you can polish it up afterwards, but you have to get it out first, you know? Yeah. So I think for the most part, it's just getting past the starting block mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. So and me, have, me and Justin have talked about that too for other creatives, no matter what it is. Like, it is like the first step is the hardest step. But once you do it, you realize, oh, that was so easy. Now you're on the journey. You're doing mm -hmm. the thing. And and then something I've come to realize, like you said, people are like, hey, what I, how do I get to that side of the table? And I'm like, well, do you have a <laughs> notepad? <laughs> like, like, it's just like, you know, and I tell them like, what do you want? Like, they, they tell me like, you're a writer or you're, you're, they're an artist. And then I'm like, just start writing. And I know that I haven't done sprints, but I know it works because in this, I remember, and I thought this was like the best thing for me. Uh, one of my finals in college it, uh, for senior year was to write a script. I got to be plus on, but you know, whatever. Um, That's but good. I, it was a, it was a deadline because I had to write a whole script and the deadline is to submit it. And I was just writing, 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 writing. And like, I remember it was me, me, Justin and Andrea were at the library and we were, I was just, while they were doing like quadratics and business stuff, I'm here just writing a story. Just you probably it wasn't quadratics. I'm kind of gaslighting over here, but it was something <laughs> businessy. For me, it was probably the same time. Remember that time I stood up for like two and a half days straight, getting that one project oh done. God. Yeah, it was probably that time. You were, yeah, you were up for mad long. Uh, but yeah, it, it the sprints like getting it done with a time crunch. It helps you get the story out and the story, the movie starts playing in your head. So you're just writing what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I believe the sprint works. And yeah, going back to what you were saying, like telling people to get started. And for someone who does illustration and writing, they fall in the same realm. But the thing is, the you know, writing is just getting the words out. Everyone has words, no matter the language, but the, the artistry of things mm -hmm. does take some sort of like exercise in the mind. You got to it's a it's a different it's a different muscle like 
I can still do my stick figures. That's I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm a really good stick figure jar. It's but, such a but... Go ahead, Sean. Go. Who's talking? You are. Brian. Go ahead. I choose Brian. <laughs> okay, Brian. Me? Brian, continue. <laughs> but I was, I was going to say that um, it's hard for me to switch channels because I, I typically, when I do my art, it's either, you know, this pen and ink kind of illustrations to, you know, painting and whatnot. But while I'm painting, I got stories happening in my head. And then when I'm writing, I keep getting this itch to go paint something. <laughs> yeah. So I do miss those, by the way. Huh? I do miss those, like your late nights. Yeah, man. I'm I'm actually easing back into it. Like I've started stacking up material. Um, I had somebody, a really good friend of mine. Unfortunately, I let him talk me out of doing my Pokemon Mondays because he was like, <laughs> "Hey, you should draw your own character." I'm like. But I like drawing Zangoose, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, because I'm like, look, I, I have other interests. I mean, this is one of them. So that was my reason to keep moving the pencil because I was like, man, you know, I can't keep waiting for Inktober to have my time to actually focus on art. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I can do Pokemon Mondays or Pokemon Mondays on a Wednesday, you know, to like help scratch that itch and still be writing at a regular pace so um I'm, like i said unfortunately i let him talk me out of that and that's one of those things too that i'm learning and i'm now passing that information on to other folks which is there's gonna be people who don't do what you do that try to give you advice yeah and sometimes it can come from people that you trust <laughs> and i feel like it's coming from a place of love meaning that you know they want to see you succeed and all this fun stuff but it's like Unless you're doing what I'm doing, it's really hard for me to see the wisdom and what it is that you're telling me, so to speak. So in doing so, I'm following his advice. I robbed myself of something that helped me not only stay motivated, but, you know, I think a lot of people were really watching that. Like you just said, you missed that. I'm like, yeah, I kind of missed that too. <laughs> so getting back into it now has been tough because I stopped. But uh, things of you know, it's like a void. Things kind of creep into that space. So now, yeah, it's it's me building up content to start working at. I got a list. Gotcha. Yeah, getting back up on that. <laughs> horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, but that's, that's it. Cool. I'm, yeah, I get back into it. <laughs> um, I think there's something to the growth of it because I know as any type of creative we want our first work to be our best work but mm -hmm. I think it's just having like that first like focal point um, of like where did you start and I wanted to show you this so like when I started I did phone cases with this it's like you know a sharpie and like Amazon paint where I saw it and I was like it's not perfect. It is nowhere near like great, but it will get better. Mm -hmm. So in that process of kind of giving myself that time to grow, I was able to see like slowly how things were working, how I research and things. So seeing from this to this is like a major like two, three years in that consistency where it may not be going as quickly as you want it to be, but mm -hmm. you're not and where you were when you started. And I think it, it has to lend itself to where of like, who you were at, you know, 27, 28 years old is a completely different person in your 30s. As you grow and as your work and your stuff continues to grow, looking at it and be like, hey, I had a really good idea here and then I can remaster it or look at it from a different perspective now. And I think people, when they see your growth, like you know, to you, this is kind of like a B plus type of thing because we're so critical of ourselves very mm -hmm. very self-critical yep. but other people would be like this is fantastic i want it because i know when i started painting it was nowhere near good and someone's like i will pay you money to say i said please don't like what <laughs> <laughs> like well, i remember my first painting was a zorro painting and i put blood sweat and tears because that was when it was glass i like had like a, a glass cut i caught covid in the middle of it i had to like disinfect oh, it no. i was like i'm not sending you like a covid <laughs> 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 having to mail it and it was just this um this thing of like where people where you want to appease people but you're so critical of yourself you're not realizing that people are really so proud of your work 
not just for the quality of it, but for the fact that you did it. The fact that yeah. you like started it and it's like, hey, you did the book. You did the painting. You did the podcast. And like, you know, some people are still like, I wish I did. And it's like, at least we're here. So I think there's something to discuss about like, hey, we did the thing. Are we finished? Are we at our peak? No, but you know what? We're closer than when we were when COVID hit. So yeah. it is something to acknowledge to be like, hey, we're further along than when we first began. Yeah, I think that's a really good that's a really good thing to bring up because I feel like a lot of people don't realize that it's a muscle that you have to build. Right. So it's not something that you just you pick up and you're perfect at. And I know for me, like I struggle, I mean, Jay knows, I struggle a lot with, like, imposter syndrome and, like, uh, wanting my art to be perfect from the rip, right? And that's just not how it goes, right? When I look at, like, digital art pieces that, like, to your point, like, I did three years ago, you know, at that point in time, I thought they were great, and, like, that was where I wanted it to be. Then I look at it now, and it's like I've learned just by picking up the pen and doing things, right? Like, just working in that space, I've learned because it's just the byproduct of working, right? So you've learned and you've learned little tricks and you've learned how to do things better or quicker or get that like image in your head out. And that goes with writing too. You only, you're only able to get to where you want to go by actually putting in that work and being consistent and doing it. Like to your point, the only difference is, right? Like if, if you don't start today, when you do start, you know, you're still starting from the same place. You could have had all that time to kind of hone yeah. your craft. So it, it is hard. We've, we've definitely spoken about it on this stream as well as others. That first step is always the hardest. But when you look back at it, you have this sense of like pride, right? You, you, you have something that you've put work into it, whether that be art, a book, comic book, dream, podcast show, whatever it is, whatever creative pursuit you can you literally have a log that you can look back at and be like, damn, I came so far from just, you know, X, Y, humble beginnings type of deal. So it, it, it is a really cool thing to see grow. And, yeah, you know, for other creatives out there, don't be scared if stuff isn't perfect. Just start with what you, what you have and it'll snowball into something that you're extremely proud of. I think we're Sorry, good there. Oh, <laughs> I just Sorry. said that. I said if you start it with what you have, it'll snowball into something you're really proud of. Oh. So, I was saying, I think that's a good place to cap it. I think we've we've had a lot of fun talking and like figuring out what we all do and like where that passion stems from. And we also gave some good advice to people that are watching or listening. So. Before we head out, um, Brian and Cello, if you could just tell people where they can find you, what you're doing, uh, Brian, go ahead. All right. Um, well, I am Brian B. Covington. You can find me on, uh, let's see, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, a little, um, under Between Magic and Dreaming. Um, I also have a website called betweenmagicanddreams.com where you can find all the books and merch and all the other goodies that I have out thus far. Um, I will be, like I said earlier, getting book three out to you this year. And uh, we'll be rounding out the ending of the beginning. And we'll see how things go from there. Love that. Um, so on Instagram, I am created by Chella. Twitch and TikTok is created by Chella too. I usually stream twice a week. Um, usually it will be um, Overwatch, Animal Crossing, Pokemon, depending on what we're going. We're trying to get my, get me into like my Pokemon competitive era and good at Overwatch, so you'll see more of that. And we're going to try to get some art done to possibly promote merch by Christmas. Who knows? Maybe, perhaps. Ooh. An idea. So definitely want you guys along for the journey. It'd be really awesome to catch you guys there. Um, chat's always open. Um, DMs are always open. And if you ever would like any one of these commissions, you can feel free to DM me on Instagram. There's always a giveaway. If you don't have cash at the moment or you don't have money, there's always some type of giveaway that I'm doing or someone else is sponsoring. So be on the lookout for that. We do phone cases as well. I promise they get better because this is my most recent one. 
empowerment. And I, I promise at the end. But, but um, thanks again. Thank you guys for having me here. Thank you guys um, for everything. And congrats on your 100th episode. Yeah, thank 100, you. 100, guys. That's you awesome. You did it. Thank you guys for showing up. Thank you guys for all the love. Thank you guys for coming on. I know we kind of like stitched just stitched this together uh kind of under the knife but thank you guys so much for coming thank you guys for watching yeah, thank you thank you everyone for sticking around through it all um we will be putting up everyone's contact um we already did in the instagram uh post leading up to it but when the when the actual video goes live and all that stuff we'll make sure to to credit everyone so you can go out and find everyone's super cool stuff that they're working on but we're going to do our little outro here. So as always, I'm Jay Justin Ruiz. And I'm Jay Jeremy Francois. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you guys so much. Bye.